It's my favourite part of the week. Yes, it's time for Talking Pines, and I'm joined by Essex boy Danny Crates, Paralympic gold medalist, among many things. Danny, welcome Cheers. to the programme. Now, I said Essex boy, which indeed you are, and you've always been a lover of sport. Yeah, ever since I was a kid. I think, I think like most people that end up doing sport or professional sport, you first find sport because you don't sit still very long <laughs> and you get sent out on the school field quite regularly to go and burn off a bit of energy. And I've always, I've always, I'm not necessarily followed sport, watched sport, but I've always taken part. Football, mm. cricket, rugby, athletics, you know, I've done it. So there you are, fit young man. You're in Australia. Yeah. On a gap year, very sensible thing to do. I get it. I've just come back from Australia, of course. <laughs> I think a few people saw me yeah, in the yeah. jungle. Um, but no, I mean, great place to travel around. Wonderful. You're there having an adventure, and then disaster happens. Yeah, I mean, I I was at the luckily I was at the end of my year, so I've done my gap year. Good. Um, <laughs> so, or as I always say, it's as, as many uh, a year's worth of pints between Sydney and Cairns, mm. the Essex version of a gap year. But um, I, I literally was right at the end, and um, just I was doing the very last job before I was coming home, and I was involved in a car crash. I was literally going to the last point to say goodbye to my friends, and then I was going to fly home. And you had this horrendous car yeah. crash. You lose an arm. How do you feel mentally after that? Um, I think like many people that have been, like you've been in the scrapes yourself, right? And, and anyone who's been in those environments, and you, hospital's a safe space. So you're, you're safe when you're in there and you've not really got to think about too much. It's when you come out. And obviously I had a short, my, my family had to fly out. This is pre-mobile phone, pre-emails. you know emails. So mum and dad got the phone call at four o'clock in the morning, horrendous. And, um, and then had dad had to go to London to get the visas, the, the tickets. So then they was on a plane, they was at my bedside within 36 hours, but they didn't know what condition I was in. They just got told it was a very serious accident. Yeah. And um, so they, I had them there and then eventually came out of hospital and had about two, three weeks still in Australia before I was strong enough to fly home. And it's when I got home, because obviously I got home, mum and dad went, had to go back to work and you just, that's when it hit home the hardest, I think. And, and I was a rugby player previously and, it was just those things started to make me realise mm. not necessarily what I'd lost, but what I might not be able to do as I'd done it before. But you keep playing sport. You decide it's not going to stop yeah. you. I mean, you clearly come out of this still with a positive mental attitude. You clearly yeah. decide what's happened is rotten, but I'm going to keep going. Yeah, I mean, I've always been, you know, I'm not always positive. We aren't, right? Sure. So we have the highs, we have the lows. But for me, it was always about trying to make something of it and try not to let it defeat me. So rugby was the first thing. I went back to my, I'm a Tharrock boy, so I went back to my local <laughs> rugby club. And, um, and then it was there, that really that was, you know, I've got my friends and family at home and that was my family as well. And they nurtured me and I was training again. And six months after start, uh, starting training, so it was only a year after the accident, we decided I was going to play again. And Which it, is amazing. But then you start to get bullied by the Paralympics. Yeah. Association and a man called Peter Arnott keeps ringing you and ringing you and ringing you and in the end you give in and decide yeah. you're going to become a Paralympian. How competitive are the Paralympics? Well, see, when he first contacted me, because uh, some of the news stories around me playing rugby and it, it was just on a dreary November day, so it made quite big news. All the, all the, all the tabloids had done it yeah. and the, the, the mainstream news channels had done it. They videoed it, featured it and... and um, and, and obviously in amongst that, I used to be a track and field athlete, right? So that had been mentioned. And, and there was this guy called Peter Arnott who looked after the amputee section. And he didn't, he can't just become a Paralympian. It is a very, very high level sport. But he said, like, we've just come, not long come back from the, the Atlanta Games. And would you like to come and start training with the squad and see how it feels? And I was just like, like look, look, I play rugby. Right? We hang upside down and drink Guinness for our eyeballs. Do you do that at athletics? No, right, I'm staying with rugby. <laughs> and he just contacted me again out of the blue one day and just, I was actually around a rugby player's friend's house and my friend's wife answered my phone. And I was like, don't answer it, it's Peter Arnold. Right? <laughs> and she answered the phone and I just said, all right, I'll come and meet some of the athletes. Because I'd always perceived disability sports kind of give it a go. I'd never really seen it as what it was and it was sport to the highest level. I met these athletes mm. and they'd come back from Atlanta and some had just missed out on medals or getting in mm. finals. And I saw what it meant to them and I suddenly realised it was sport. It was real. And, and that just ignited there and then, just started wow. that started a journey that well, I never imagined. Danny, what a journey. You know, bronze in your first Paralympics and the big one. Yeah. 
In your second pack, let's have a look at this. Yeah, this, I've so this got is, to have a look at so this. So this is the Athens medal. This was this uh, is the gold medal, Paralympic yeah. gold medal, eight hundred metres. Eight hundred. Yeah, I made the switch after Sydney. I just couldn't quite get the four right, and um, and it just wasn't fitting. So it was all that change for me. It was, How you proud know, are you of that? Massively. I mean, it, it was more than what went into it, and and actually, what makes me more proud is not just winning the medal, but I had like thirty of my friends and family in the stadium, and that. You know, they call it sacrifices in sport or, or when you're going for something in life. And it's, it's not, it's life choices for me. I made mm. a choice and my friends backed me all the way. And, you know, I missed their holidays, births of their kids, their you, parties. You, you've got to be dedicated. Yeah, and I wasn't here sometimes. I was away training in, you know, yeah. South Africa and America, Australia. We used to train. But when it came to the big one, they was there. Like, and that's what meant so much to me that they was, they'd been on that journey with me and they never questioned it. There were no shortcuts, though, are there? All the people that I know yeah. that have succeeded at sport have worked blooming hard. There's no shortcuts in anything, right? If you want to be successful and there is a success at the end of it, then it's never going to be easy, right? It's always, it's always a journey. It's always going to have its highs and its lows. And I had mine. I had the injuries, the setbacks, the yeah. doubts. But, um, you know, you've gone on, media career, celebrity master chef, <laughs> your book, Danny Boy, and now a business which goes around and talks to people about, about their mindset. Yeah, so I, alongside being a, uh, an athlete, I was a speaker as well. I always felt it's important to have something else to, to take my mind off sport sometimes. And then, so I started the, the, the keynote speaking circuit. I've done that for 24 years, and that just got bigger and bigger and bigger. And it got to a stage where my coach was like, that's great, Dan, you can go and speak in Malaysia, but there's your training programme. As long as you do that, you can go and speak wherever you want. So that carried on after I retired, and then I've sort of expanded it now to working with businesses and helping the teams within them understand what that high-performance mindset looks like and yeah. how we – some of the lessons we learn from sport, but they're not all great from sports, so some of the lessons we learn from business as well and people that are doing it well. Well, I have to say, Danny, you're a very inspirational figure. You had, I mean, we all, we all get some knocks in life, but you had a really big, difficult, nasty one. You've overcome it. It's been a huge success. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. To have you on the programme, it really has. Thank you.